everyone, welcome to BMFA Digital Marketing for Asia. My name is Joanna and I am a marketing manager working here at Sompang Telkom Europe. I'm so, so excited today because we have our very first guest on our channel. Please, ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to Sompang Hi everyone. Yeah, why don't you introduce yourself first and tell us about who you are and what you do. I'm Sompang I'm working as a business development. Uh, my role here at Sompang Telkom Europe is to make sure our businesses uh, can successfully promote their businesses in Japan as in Asia. Perfect. Thank you so much uh, for joining me today. Nice. And in today's video, we are going to talk about virtual advertising. So we are going to explain what the virtual advertising is. We're going to give you some examples. And then at the end, we're going to try to answer the question, is virtual advertising the future? Let's jump right into it. So let's start off by explaining what virtual advertising is. So that why don't you read us the definition of virtual advertising? So virtual advertising is the use of digital technology to start virtual advertising content uh, into a live or pre-recorded television show, often in sports events. Uh, this technique is often used a lot by broadcasters to operate existing physical advertising uh, panels uh, on the play field uh, with the virtual content on the screen when broadcasting the same event in multiple regions. Okay, so basically, for example, when you're watching a football game, like let's say we are watching a football game, we're here in London, and you know, around the field, there, there are those like banners yeah. that like have advertisers on, adver yeah, yeah, yeah. ads on them. So basically, we here in London would see different ads than let's say people in Japan, people in Mexico, or people in Poland. And I think this is actually so smart. And, um, yeah. However, I think recently the term virtual advertising is getting um, like a new meaning. Like, are you familiar with the metaverse, for example, or Web3? No uh, you know, you heard mm -hmm. about metaverse, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, since the recent increase in popularity of the virtual reality, it seems that the whole new world, or maybe whole new worlds, plural. Uh, it's opening right in front of us and it brings a lot of advertising opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yes, over the past weeks, a, uh, there was a news that uh, Hakodo, which is one of the most popular arts agencies in Japan, uh, they're going to be the first company to start doing virtual arts, metaverse arts. In Japan. Mm -hmm. in Japan. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to read out the news. Yeah. So they're saying arts on Roblox. Uh, Roblox is an online game platform, a game creation system uh, developed by Roblox Corporation that allows uh, users to program games and play games created by other users. Mm -hmm. uh, virtual reality market uh, is forecast is Kyoke, and this project is estimated to top eight hundred billion dollars. Wow. Okay, so I think that one thing is clear: the metaverse marketing is actually becoming a thing. Like it's already, it's already happening. I think so. Yeah. To give you an example, let's talk about. Okay, let's talk about Gucci and Lil Nas X. Do you know Lil Nas X? Yeah, yeah he's the American singer, right? So what do they have in common, you might think? Well, they both utilize Metaverse to mm. create immersive experiences for their audience. To so explain it further, can you tell us what Lil Nas X did in 2020? Of course I can. Thank so you. In November of 2020, Lil Nas decided to organize a virtual concert on a Roblox platform, which was visited 38 million times. Wow. In 2021, uh, Gucci released a two-week immersive experience called Gucci Garden, uh, also on Roblox to increase the brand awareness among the younger generation. They also designed the sold digital shoes that can be only worn in virtual reality. Would you buy virtual Gucci shoes? Of course I do. <laughs> you, you would buy? Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, so those are the examples from the Western countries, but how about Japan? Actually, Japan is also no stranger to metaverse advertising, and we prepared three examples that we would like to talk about today. So let's start with our own SoftBank. So we just have to mention that a few weeks ago, SoftBank opened a SoftBank mobile career shop oh, yeah. on Zepeto. So Zepeto is a Korean app. It's operated by Naver who actually is the creator of Line that we mentioned before in this video, so just make sure to check it out. Uh, so basically when the Zepeto app first was developed, you could use it to create your avatar, but with the recent update, there is so much more that you can do. You can basically enter the virtual reality. And yeah, SoftBank opened their mobile shop mm. within the Zepeto virtual reality, and it mimics 
the like real life shops where you can walk in and there is the avatar staff that will help you and answer your questions. You can actually make purchases. Mm. And what I love the most is that um, within inside of the shop there is like a selfie station where where you can take a virtual selfie with SoftBank's mascots. Okay, Zepeto app is gaining more popularity and it's being called like the metaverse for Gen Z. So it is not the first time SoftBank invested into the metaverse. In November 2021, our investors led by SoftBank Digital Fund 2 invested 93 million dollars uh, in the NFT game platform the Sandbox. So in December of the same year, SoftBank Digital Fund 2 invested uh, 230 million won, which is equivalent to 170 million dollars uh, in Zebeto as a lead investor. Um, so the next thing we wanted to talk about, I think this is one of the coolest things I've seen in a very, very long time. So have you ever heard about the ICJ Museum? No. So ICJ stands for Is Japan Cool? And basically it's like a web portal where you can do just so many things. So let us show you like a digital museum. I see, I see, IJC Museum. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. So basically you go inside the museum and then you can just see all of the exhibitions. So for example, this is like some, I always, oh my God, I, it's like my goal in life to go and see this exhibition in real life. And I tried to do it when she was in London, but the tickets are all, yeah, but like the tickets are always sold out. Yeah, always, yeah. yeah. So basically this is so cool because you can like click on the object and it will yeah. review like everything about the author. Yeah. You can see the like the objects, like you can see them from all sides. I think the website is oh, just- it Oh, you don't like this? No. Oh, you have this thing that you oh, don't like. Phobia. Yeah, you have it. Really? Oh my gosh. Oh. Like, because we are checking this one. Oh, the pumpkin, and she oh. doesn't like the holes. Oh, me too, me too. Oh, really? So, 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 so. so, so, so. <laughs> Shubo Taikyo. Shubo Taikyo Show. Wow. Yeah, so, so, there is also this game section, and when you open it, it oh. will take you through like the, the history of like computer games. Mm. You can actually play it. So, basically, like the quality of the games is also changing depending on like which uh, decade you're in and you just go and you collect like stuff like mm. I'm going to show you when you go to the end of the game you actually meet you can like meet game creators for example these guys like oh, oh, game creators and you can watch interviews with them there is like creator of the playstation oh, okay. creator of the mario and everything so you can just learn about game industry and yeah. the game development in Japan since the 80s all the way until now and I think it's really, really cool. Oh. And the last thing I want to talk about uh, in terms of this museum is, do you like ramen? No, too. Yeah, they have a, I love ramen. I love ramen as well. They have a ramen ranking website where you have pictures oh. of all of the ramens from all different <laughs> prefectures Dude. and you can click on it, you can learn about it. That looks nice. And then you can actually, is it cool? It is cool. It's cool. Yeah. And then once you vote, you go to the ranking, and you can see which ramen is like number. Obviously, nah, Hakata ramen is first. Yeah, I'm uh, Hakata ramen fan. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what do you think about this website? It looks very cool. Yeah, I think um, yeah, I think it's actually made by by Anna, Anna. which is the Japanese Airlines, right? Yeah, Anna. Yeah. Yeah, Anna. Yeah. yeah, So I think they made this website to like introduce uh, like. Japan to people who have never been there and like encourage people yeah, 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 to yeah, Japan. Too. But this website is actually I've never seen a website like this mm. before. Like I love it. It's so nice. It's so immersive and you can actually learn so much. Like yeah. you can play games, visit the museum, like it's amazing. Mm. And I think it's a great use of like technology to introduce Japan to people are all around the world. Okay, so the last example we would like to talk about is this virtual store by beauty brand Shiseido. Mm. So it says the Shiseido virtual flagship store is a smartphone website, so please scan the QR code with your smartphone to access the website. So why don't you give it a go? Are you in? Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. This virtual store launched in 2020 as a response to ongoing pandemic. And the Shiseido virtual flagship is divided into three levels. You can sample the makeup, you can learn things about how to apply makeup, there's like makeup tutorials, and on the bottom floor you can book, it's called um, meditation pod sessions. It's actually like one of the first mm. 
things like this in Japan. And it is actually not the first time Shiseido is digging into the virtual realm. Actually, um, some time ago they also released like a beauty filter that you can use when you're doing like phone calls on iPhone. So okay, so then, so now the last thing we have to do we have to answer the question of is virtual marketing the future? Of course. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be interesting to see like what the you know if less people are gonna like actually do shopping online and watch more or maybe like. It could be like different from like one country to another country. Mm. Right. Yeah, I also agree with you. I think it's not only the future; it's already happening right now. And with technology, technology is developing so fast. So I think you know maybe um, within like a year or just a few years, it's just yeah. going to be totally normal. It's a quite new thing at the moment, but I think it's just a matter of time. And so like yeah, obviously like yeah, why maybe, wouldn't you do virtual? Maybe people things? might spend their most of the time in yeah. the couple of so like yeah. watching reality. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Thing. And thank you so much for watching. That's it for today. So thank you so much for My joining pleasure. me. And I hope you're going to visit us again very, very soon. And Cheers. I also wanted to say a big thank you to our colleague Akai because she helped us research the thank virtual um, advertising in Japan. So thank you so much, Akai. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, we want to ask you about what do you think uh, about uh, virtual reality and yeah. Stuff. Just leave a comment down below. We want to know your opinion. So. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to give her channel. Yeah, once again, thank you so much for watching and we will see you very very soon in the next one. Bye! Bye!